I want to design a bolt hull model in SketchUp that I can cut out on my laser cutter, but I don't want to design something from scratch. I thought it'd be cool to find something designed by Nathaniel Green Harishoff. He's from my hometown in Bristol, Rhode Island. Harishoff is super famous. They won the America's Cup uh, between 1893 and 1920. So let's see if we can find some plans that we can bring into SketchUp and build a 3D model from. All right, so apparently the MIT Museum has a lot of the Harishoff stuff in their database. So let's see if we can filter by construction. Yes, so this is what I'm looking for, something like this, something that shows the hull design of the boat that we can bring in and kind of slice up right in SketchUp. But this isn't exactly what I'm looking for. I want something with more sections of the hull um, so we don't have to do a lot of guesswork. Let's try hull detail. Now these are real close up details of things. This is actually a torpedo boat hatch. Harishoff actually designed a lot of World War II boats, which is kind of neat. Let's try lines. Okay, this is what I'm looking for here. Okay, here's one. So this is a 35 foot yacht named Shadow. This is exactly what I'm looking for. So here is the boat right here, built in 1871. Here's a couple more pictures of it. So supposedly this was one of the fastest boats of its kind back in the day. And check this out, this is kind of neat. It has a centerboard that pivots down from its keel. All right, so let's check out these plans and see if we can kind of decode what exactly we're looking at. So we have a side profile view here, this right here looks like a top view. Then we have a front view and a back view. So from the front, everything's symmetrical so they can just do one half of the boat here. And so we have all of these sections here. So for instance, this is labeled as section one. So there's one, two, three, four. And that corresponds to this number right here. So section one. So this is showing where the section is from a side and top view. So you can see it's labeled number one right here as well. And so we can look at section number two. So here's two, and then this is labeled showing where that exists on the boat. So we have all of these sections, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven right here. Then we also have from the top view, we have these sections, so LWL, I'm that's got to stand for like waterline, maybe level waterline when it's like sitting level in the water, uh, you know, not keeled over. There's number two here, so this profile right here is a slice corresponding at this height through the hull right here, so number two. So we have two, three, four, and two, three, four right here. And finally, we have a few sections going from front to back. So we have A, B, and C, and those are labeled right here on the top view. So A, B, and C. So this is really cool because it kind of gives us three different perspective uh, sections through the hull, which I think will give us enough information to be able to kind of recreate these profiles in SketchUp and get a sense for the shape. And then I can decide how I want to slice this up for uh, laser cutting plywood in order to create a model. All right, so let's jump into SketchUp. All right, so I'm just going to drag the image right into SketchUp. So I'll scale the image to full size using the tape measure tool. And then I want to orient copies of the top side and front views. So first I'll explode the image so it gets converted into a material applied to a face and group it to isolate the entities. And this is gonna let me crop the face down so I can basically isolate each view I want. Then I'll just make copies of the face, rotate them into position and then crop them down. And after aligning the reference images, I'm ready to start drawing the profiles. Now I'm gonna use native SketchUp tools for this, but there are some extensions you can check out if you're using SketchUp Pro that'll help you draw complex curves. All right, so once I have the profile created, I make it into a component so we can mirror it later on, and I just move it into position referencing the marks on the top view plan. And then I just repeat this process for the additional profiles. I ended up keeping a copy of the previous profile in place that I could explode um, just so I could reuse some of the geometry. 
And once I got to the other side, I realized I should have started with the outside profile because it just allows me to maintain much more consistent profiles, but that's okay. And after all the front profiles were created, I used the flip tool to mirror them to the other side of the boat. Now I'm gonna do some cleanup later on, but since these are components, I only have to edit one side and the other side will update automatically. So I just went on through this same process for the side profiles and the profiles along the waterline. And after a little bit of cleanup, things were starting to look pretty good. Now, at this point, I'm ready to start thinking about how I wanna model this for the laser cutter. So first, I need to scale this down. So I need to fit it on a sheet of uh, 12 inch by 12 inch plywood. So I'm gonna make the center keel 11 and a half inches and then everything else should fit just fine. So what I'm thinking is basically having just like a center solid piece of plywood for the main middle keel and then each of these perpendicular sections will attach to it like ribs. So I don't even really need to see these other profiles, so I'm just gonna hide them for now. So I'll add some thickness to these ribs, and I don't know, I, I don't really like the way it looks. It's like really chunky, so I'm thinking maybe like punching out holes in the middle of everything so it kind of looks hollow and you can see to the other side of it. So I use the offset tool for the ribs, which was easy, but the keel required a little bit more manual work in order to make sure the ribs still had a good connection point to the keel. All right, cool. I'm liking the way this looks now. I just need to think about how I'm actually gonna connect the ribs to the keel. So one thing I could do is cut a slot in the keel to kind of slip the ribs through uh, and then notch the top and bottom so they fit snugly in place. But I don't know, I kind of feel like the keel would lose a lot of strength if I did that. So another idea I had was to just notch the ribs and the keel so I can sort of just like rotate the ribs into place and then just have them like click into position. So I think the plywood will have enough flexibility for me to pull that off. Now, before we go any further, I need to test out the slot size I should be using for the three millimeter plywood I'm gonna be cutting this out of. So I found this uh, cutter slot and tab clearance test. I've got it imported into Lightburn and we're gonna go ahead and cut this out so we know exactly the size of the slot we need. So I just cut out the curve test and this is important for a number of reasons. So the thickness of the laser beam actually removes material. So you have to account for that thickness. The thickness of the material itself isn't actually three millimeters. I measured it to be about 2.75 millimeters. Then you have things like the density of the material, if there's any flexibility in it, the friction of it as you place it into the slot and even the precision of your machine. And you'll notice that there's actually two sets of tests here to test both the X and Y axis separately in case there's some different precision problems along each axis. Now I had a problem with this one. I should have known this from the start because I did measure this. Um, the thickness of this was 2.75 and this test only goes down to 2.8. And what's interesting is if I actually measure that slot that should be 2.8, I'm actually measuring about 3.25. So although the digital file is showing a 2.8 slot, the thickness of the laser is actually burning a bigger hole than what is in the file. So that's kind of the whole purpose of this. So there's a little bit of wiggle in the smallest slot. So I'm gonna have to put together another test that goes even lower. All right, so I modified the test a little bit so we could go even more narrow than the original one. So let's go ahead and cut this one out. So negative five would be a super tight fit and negative 0.4 would be just a little bit of breathing room. All right, now I can cut these notches, make some final adjustments, and then merge the two halves of each ribs into one solid object. Now to export these to my laser, I'm gonna use the free face SVG extension. It allows you to select faces and lay them out flat. That way you don't have to manually do it. And then you can just export that as an SVG, which goes right into Lightburn, and I can cut it out on my laser. All right, let's go cut this out and see how it all fits together. <laughs> So 
So it looks like we have a casualty here. So this must have fallen below and gotten cut by a bypass of the laser from another piece. And the sheet of plywood got bumped by the laser. Uh, I think it was this piece that was kind of hanging out. You can see we got knocked out of place here. So we're gonna have to uh, recut this one as well. I'm actually kind of glad that this failed because it's the only one oriented uh, a different direction uh, in relationship to the grain. So I'm actually gonna spin it around and have it cut the same direction as all these other ones. Before we go ahead and cut those remaining pieces, I figured we might as well test fit these and you know, make sure all of these are gonna fit. Now, one thing I'm realizing is, and it's so easy to forget the scale um, that you're modeling. You're modeling really small things. I was supposed to have little fingers on each side of this to help it stay in place. And it's so small, they're basically useless. All right, so I need to figure out which one is which. I suppose it'd be good to label these. So that's the widest. I think this one probably be these three. All right, so I think, I think that's gotta be it. All right, so hoping these will fit, obviously. So there's definitely enough flex, which was kind of what I was expecting. I should have done this one first. This one's harder to get in. This is definitely the tightest fit here. This one's not easy. Uh, I think something just broke. Uh, what just broke? Yeah, I think it's split right here, but I got it in place. I didn't realize this happened either. This is definitely one of the biggest reasons I want to get a honeycomb so um, I can do cuts without stuff like this happening. So overall on the first try, I would say this definitely works. Um, certainly could have been designed better so it would fit a little bit better and not be so delicate. Let me go ahead and cut out this other one right here. So for simplicity, I'm literally just gonna select all of these other ones in Lightburn and just delete them. And then I can just rotate this one 90 degrees. All right, so I'll actually have it flipped this way so I can fit it nicely in this little corner just so I don't waste additional plywood that's not necessary. I'll set the origin to this bottom right corner. That way I can frame it. So we'll just select this corner here and frame it. We'll actually use the rubber band just so I know that it's framing correctly. All right. So I think we're good. Turn on our fan, air assist. Let's do it. All right, so this one's looking much better. All right, so I would say this is a success. You know, there's definitely things that I would change or do differently. Um, some mistakes were made with burning and stuff like that. But another thing I thought would be cool, so almost would make like a cool wall sconce if I put some sort of like paper or something inside the ribs on the back and then like LED lights in the middle shining towards it. I don't know. Um, it's kind of a pretty cool form. Now, if you wanna learn more about the laser I used in this video, you can check out the links in the description below. I'm actually gonna be doing a full review in a later video. And if you wanna learn some more tricks on how to get your 3D model to a laser cutter, you can check out this video right here. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.